In this problem again, we have our, our wheel here. Okay, let's assume it's a solid, solid disc, so it's going to be solid here. Um, and we're going to apply the force along the inside, okay, not along the outside. So uh, imagine like a bike. So this might be the gear of the bike, and you're going to apply it with the chain, for example, might apply the force along here. And then it's going to want to spin this way, and there's going to be some friction opposing it. So that's the picture, that's the visual. Um, when you do this, the main equation we looked at yesterday was the sum of the torques. That's going to equal I alpha. So remember, this is essentially the F equals MA for rotational motion, where torque is the rotational force, I is rotational inertia, and alpha is rotational acceleration. So when you do this, you do have to define your positive and negative direction. The convention is typically, like if you just in a blind situation, uh, counterclockwise we would say is going to be positive. However, I typically like to look at the problem and see, you know, what is the direction of the motion in the first place. And so when you look at this, this is a greater torque than this. Therefore, the ultimate direction will be clockwise. So I'm going to define clockwise as positive. Again, if you defined, what would have happened if you defined um, counterclockwise as positive? You'll get a negative acceleration. So it doesn't matter how you do it. It'll just, it'll work, all work out in the end. So I'm going to define positive uh, acceleration here to be the clockwise direction. Okay? All right, so let's go ahead and do it. So we have two torques. This is providing a torque, right? So F, if we call this F1 and F2, we know there's a torque from F1 minus the torque from F2. How do we find a torque? F times R, right? So this would be F1 times little r minus F2 times big R. And then let's just go ahead and do it. So when we sum up those torques, F1 was 100, little r was 0.2, F2 was 20, and big R was 0.6. Okay, so that's going to be 20 minus 12, or 8. So if the question simply asked you for the net torque, the answer would be 8 in the clockwise direction. Okay, let's go ahead and keep going. So I, if it's a solid disk, different materials or different kind of configurations are going to have different dimensions. What's the dimension, what's the I for a solid disk? One half M r squared. And which r is this? Is this the little r or the big r? The big r. So the whole thing is rotating. The whole radius of this is rotating. So we're going to consider that radius. If only the inner part was rotating, we'd only use that radius. Okay, so that'll be 1 half m big r squared times alpha. 1 half m was 2 and r was 0.6 squared alpha. Okay, and so ultimately alpha looks like it's going to be 8 divided by 0.6 squared, which gives us, and what are the units for a, or alpha? radians per second squared.